I'm telling you this morning that the plan of God for you in this season is the plan of greatness. Your enemies will find out at the end of the day that indeed you are not who they think you are. I want to and I pray and I desire you become a man of integrity in accordance to their principles or in accordance to the values of the kingdom of God. I'm going to tell you today that God has a place for you. And if you understand this, you will never be worried in life. before you for your glorious God excellent king ancient of the days as old as you are you change not we come before you this hour we come unto you this hour saying let your name be glorified let your name be honored day and night in the name of Jesus great viewers of this ministry we have come today with the word of God and we have come to partner with you by the word of God for the word of God with the word of God we have come to partner with you to make you to understand that God is still doing miracles. God is still doing miracles and he will do a miracle in your life in this season. God is still the God that does not change. He has lost the ability to change. He's ageless. He's changeless. So in this season, as you keep watching, as you keep on turning in, do not be discouraged. God will come to your place. He will come and help. He is your helper. Do not depend or trust on man. Just depend and trust in the Lord thy God. He will see you through. One more time, I want to appreciate you all for always tuning in, for always being there, for receiving the word. The word you are receiving in this season shall be made manifest in different dimensions in your life and family ministry, business, career, destiny. It shall be made manifest in the name of Jesus. One more time, we say, may the Lord bless you all. Thank you for coming in today. We will be going to the word of God. We have come today to share the word of God at this hour. I'm just excited in my spirit. I know God is going to touch someone this hour. I'm so excited in my spirit. And I know and I believe God is touching somebody even right now. I don't know who that person is, but if it be you, if it be you, do not neglect this hour. Do not neglect the message you're going to be receiving. If it be you, make sure you give God all the glory. Make sure you submit and yield to God. He is able to do it again and again. If it be you, make sure you submit to Him. If it be you, make sure you depend on Him. If it be you that is going to be receiving this hour from God, make sure you learn to praise Him. So what He gives to you will be permanent. The enemy is not going to take it from you. But I prophesied this morning, as many as are going to be listening this hour, in different dimensions, you shall receive good things in the name of Jesus. Amen. We have come today to share with us the word of God. And what is the theme of our message today? The theme is this, the significance of the word of God. The significance of the word of God. What do I mean by significance? The word significance can also be the word importance. It can also be the word not, noteworthiness. So when we are talking about the noteworthiness of the word of God or the significance or the importance of the word of God, it's all the same thing. But today I've come to make you to understand that there is such a thing known to be significance. There is such a thing known to be noteworthiness and or importance. And as you pay attention to the word today, the Lord will bless you beyond your own expectation in the name of Jesus. What is significance? Significance, this is the quality of being worthy of attention. 
the what the quality of being worthy of attention that is what significance so when we are talking about the noteworthiness of the word of god it entails that the word of god has the quality of being worthy of attention the noteworthiness of the word of god it entails that the word of god has the ability of being worthy of what attention worthy of your attention for as many as are paying attention today there is something that the word of god is gonna be doing in your life right now as you are listening right now as you have been able to plug in do not think it is business as usual no it is never gonna be so it's gonna be what a business as not usual unusual business so i'm saying this for you to please see pay attention remain plugged in and just pay attention and give yourself to Christ as you are receiving the word that which backs the word of God will also back you. What are we talking about today? In this significance of the word of God, that is something I want you to understand. What is this that I want you to understand? The word of God, excuse me, has great powers, great potentials in it. The word of God, that is something it can do in the life of a man. The word of God has the ability to do what to cause a man to be in alignment the word of god has what it takes to enable a man remain in alignment of the word of god and when sought is accomplished there are two different uh, two different measures that a man will experience there are two different dimensions that a man will begin to experience when a man of god comes into the alignment of the will of god by the word of God, that such a man can experience what we call what break out. Number two, such a man can experience what we call what breakthrough. What do I mean by breakout? When I'm talking about the word breakout, it means what to escape from prison, to escape for, from prison. And on that strength, I speak life into somebody right now. I speak energy into someone right now. That in this season, starting from now, you are breaking out of any prison known and unknown to you in the name jesus i pray over your life that now as many as under the sound of my voice you break out of any kind of prison in the name of jesus i said that break out intense means what to do what to escape from prison and i declare for everyone under the sound of my voice that in this season you escape from any kind of prison in your family in your career in your destiny in your business in whatever you are doing however the enemy has been able to apprehend you and place it in a prison yard be it intellectually or emotionally or physically or spiritually or otherwise i say today you break out of such prison yes in the name of jesus the grace to escape from that prison yard has come upon you now escape in the name of jesus and nothing the word of god does in the life of men is to allow them to experience what is called what breakthrough is to allow them to experience what breakthrough breakthrough is the instance of removing or surpassing an obstruction or restriction is the instance of what of removing or surpassing an obstruction or what or restriction another word definition for breakthrough is what to gain popularity to gain popularity and someone today will gain popularity in the name of jesus what are we talking about at large we are making us understand that the word of god can cause a man to do what to be in alignment to the will of god so much so that he will express break out he also will express what breakthrough these two things we need it you may have been able to break out what about breakthrough you may have been able to break through. What about breakout? But for those that have not experienced any of the two, today is your day to experience it in the name of Jesus. I want us to go to the book of Genesis, chapter number 31, from verse number 11. But let's read 1 Peter first. The book of 1 Peter, chapter number 3, verse 12. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 3, verse number 12. I want us to read it, then we go to Genesis. The book of 1 Peter 3, 12, it says, For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. And his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. 
What does it mean for the eyes of the Lord to be over the righteous? It didn't stop there. It also went and said, And his ears are open unto their prayers. Unto the prayers of who? The righteous. That entails that the righteous will always not fail to pray because the ears of the Lord are open to hear. What if you are not praying? What do you think that God will hear about you? Because his ears are already open. Now, when you say you are, a wretch, you are righteous in any capacity, when, or when you are walking in righteousness, but you do not pray, then what is that that the ears of the Lord will receive about you? I'm trying to lay emphasis on this to enable you again and again to do what? To begin to occupy your place in the place of prayer. Most of us are not praying, but the Bible is making us to understand. For you and I that are the righteous ones, by the grace of God, by the mercy of God, by the love of God, that are the righteous ones, that God's ears are open unto you. And for you to understand that the ear of God is open for you, it is telling you or revealing to you that you need to open up your mouth. So in this season, do not fail to open your mouth. God is willing to hear from you. His eyes are over you, which means he is seeing you. He is understanding what you are passing through. He knows where you are located, but he is still expecting to do what? To open up your mouth. Let's go to the book of Genesis, chapter number 30. The book of Genesis, chapter number 31. Book of Genesis, 31, from number 11 to 13. And I read the scripture. Wherever you are, open the scripture and read with us. Genesis 31, 11. And the angel of God spoke unto me in a dream. Saying, Jacob, ah, who is that Jacob this morning? That the angel of the Lord can, can visit and minister and call upon him or her. In the days of Jacob, the Bible said, and the angel of God spoke unto me in a dream, saying, Jacob, if your name is Pastor Lemmy, you put in Pastor Lemmy right there. If you are Mr. ABC, Pastor ABC, put in that name, no longer Jacob. And the God and the angel of God spoke unto me in a dream, saying, Pastor Lemmy. And I said, Here am I. In the days of Jacob, the Bible revealed that God was able to release to send an angel to go minister unto him. And when the angel got there, he began to, to call upon this Jacob to make sure he has seen the right person. Because your inability to answer means you are not the right person. But your ability to answer entails that you are the right person and you have the capacity to receive from God. You may think that to answer, here am I, is easy. It is not always easy. Remember in the days of Adam, a time came in his life when he could not answer, here am I. As simple as it is, he couldn't answer it. He could not. Why? Because of disobedience. In the days of, of Jacob, while he was there, the word of the Lord came unto him and said, Jacob, and he answered, here am I. I want to power, empower you today by telling you that you should make yourself available. Whatever that will do what, that will disrupt your activities in God. Whatever that will do what, that will unplug you in the, in the things of God. Whatever that will make you not to be available for God to approach you. Just right now, begin to do what? Begin to dislodge. Begin to walk out. Begin to run away. Flee from such things. So much so that when God comes upon you and calls you, you will answer your name. Because everyone will be, will be called by God according to their own season. When God will be calling you, where will you be? What are you going to be saying? I want to prophesy to someone under the sound of my voice that in this season, the Lord will come unto you and call upon you by your name. In the name Jesus. Why am I saying this? The book of 1 Peter said that the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open. So when Jacob was called, he was able to respond, here I am. And the Lord heard that. For the angel to reach out to that means that God had seen him first before the angel went. And when Jacob was able to respond, it means that Jacob was in a state that he could do what? He could interact with his maker. But most of us today, we have lost the ability, we have lost the state that we enable us to interact with our maker. If you have lost that state, please come back. That is time for you. And now is the time. I have come to call you back into that faith. I have come to call you back into God, into the word of God that has the ability to make men to become the best of themselves. That has the ability to transform men. That has the ability to reform men. A man may not do it for you, but God will not fail. And the days of the angels are still up to, uh, are still available and they are still working till now. It is not the thing of the past. 
The angels are still doing their work in the land of the living. When the angel will be sent, what will be your response? Let's go to verse number 12. And he said, lift up now thine eyes. Most of us, we need to hear this. We need to know this. We have been able to cast our eyes upon the things that, that, that are very much around us. Every day we are looking up, up to those, those things, the same thing, again and again. But look at the message that was given unto Jacob in his own time. And he said, lift up now thine eyes. I want to tell someone this. Sir, man, wherever you are, is a time and a season to lift up your eyes. It is you that will do it for yourself. It is your season to lift up your eyes. You have been able to look down for a long time. You have been able to look up to men for a long time. You've looked up to women for a long time. You've looked up to ministers for a long time. Remember when Jesus was given a case study or a parable concerning what? The good neighbor. Remember the priest that was, that was mentioned. The priest got to that point, saw the same person and walked away. Even though he was a priest, but he could not pay attention to the man that needed help. So for us to keep on looking at men, we will suffer for a long time. We will be in that condition for a long time. Most of you are saying, oh, you want a priest prays pray, for you, it is done. When you see him, he's going to pray to God, he's going to do this or do that. No, it is time for you to do what? To begin to look, lift up your eyes. Lifting up your eyes entails, stop looking at Allah, uh, your surroundings. Stop looking at within you. Stop looking at within your own reach. Look what? Up above. There are things that are coming from above. You need to look up to it, plug into it, and begin to receive it. Look up. Lift up now thy eyes and see. He was commanded one when he looks up his lift up his eyes that he will do what he will see. I declare now by this word of God that your eyes are open to see in the name Jesus. May your eyes now be open to see in the name of Jesus. Because what God has for you, the enemy does not want you to see it. They do not want you to assess it. But I've come today to tell you that God has something in store for you. But you need to do what? Lift up your eyes. Then you begin to see. All the rams which live upon the cattle are restrained, speckled, and graced. For I have seen all that Laban doeth unto thee. The things that God wanted this man to see were the things that was relevant to what he was doing in the land of the living. Most of us have not been able to see the things that are relevant to what we are doing in the land of the living. As starting our destiny, as starting our ministry, our family, our calling. But when we begin to hear to the word of God, we will be able to understand. And he was told, I have now seen what Laban doeth unto you. Some of you are seen in the place where the people come not as Laban, as he mistreating you. They maltreat you. But I want to tell you that by what? By the significance of God's word, you will be caused to do what? To break out. You will be caused to do what? To break through. So this man that was called Jacob was under the hand, in the hand of the man called Laban. And Laban was busy maltreating him in different dimensions. For Laban, he was not maltreating him. But for Jacob, he was not he was not okay in the hand of Laban. Laban was doing what he wanted to do to accomplish his own goals, not minding the experience or the feelings of Jacob. And it was not good for Jacob. Even at the time, Laban was still saying that the wives of Jacob and the children were his own daughters and his own children. What happened to the man that paid the bride price? He didn't consider his own place at all. So for Laban, nothing was good for Jacob. So if not for the intervention of God, by the word of God, Jacob would have remained under Laban. But when the word of God got to Jacob, he was not told what to do. And I pray even today that this word of God coming to you, we minister to you what to do in this season. In the name of Jesus. And the word said unto him, I have seen, I know what Laban doeth unto you. Do you think that God does not know what you are passing through? Are you here saying that, oh, you are just taking, having these challenges all by yourself? No one is seeing what you're passing through? No one understands? No. Let that kind of statement, that kind of word be far from you. Away with such words. God knows. God told Jacob that I know what Laban doeth unto you. Is there anyone here in that same place, in that kind of situation? I've come to tell you that God knows. And as long as God knows, just keep on, remain plugged in. 
Keep it up with the Lord. He will make you to do it. To break out. And I prophesy. As soon as I got the sound of my voice. That I need to break out in this season. Receive the grace and break out in the name of Jesus. I prophesy you break out in this season. In the name of Jesus. Verse number 13 said. I am the God of Bethel. We are the anointed the pillar. And we are the vowels a vow unto me. Now. Arise. Get thee out from this land and return unto the land of thy kindred. Now, because of the experience of Jacob, the Lord began to tell him to get out of that land and begin to go to the place called his own kindred. And go to his own kindred. Remember the days of God, how it was. In the days of Abraham, he was asked to do what? To walk out of his own kindred. Walk out of his own nation. Walk out of his own household. And go to the place God will show him. In the days of the one man called Jacob, he was not asked to do what? To go to his own kindred. That is to say, it is only by the word of God that a man can fulfill destiny. Not by experience. Do not base on your experience. Your experience will cause you hardship. It will cause you failure. It will cause you pain. As important as they could be, do not use it as a map to do what? To ascend, to assess the future for yourself. No. Jacob was told to do what? To go back to his own what? To his own kindred. And while this man was going to his own kindred, the things he will face, he, will, he didn't know. All he knew was, God said unto me, go to my own kindred. Let's go to Genesis chapter 32 from 9 to 10. Let me show you something there. Then I round out the, the message. I am the God of Bethel, we are thou. Genesis 32, from 9 to 10. And Jacob said, O God of my father, Abraham, and God of my father, Isaac, the Lord which said this unto me, return unto thy country, and to thy kindred, and I will deal well with thee. The Lord has said unto him, return, and I will deal well with thee. The Lord said unto him, Return and I will deal well with thee. Is there anyone here this hour that God is speaking to? What are you hearing? I hope you are hearing. Return and I will deal well with thee. It means in prosperity you will prosper. It means you are breaking out of what? Prison. It means you are breaking forth. You are breaking through. It means you are what? You are going to experience something new and that is good. That will ordained for you from the what? From the ages past. Because for everyone alive in the land of the living, there is a dimension God has ordained for him or her. But the question is this, are you going to be able to access such a dimension? Yes, you are able. On which capacity? It is by the capacity of the word of God. When you are able to receive the word of God that is consistent, that is due for you, not the word of God due for another. When you receive it, it begins to do what? Begins to direct you into the place you need to be in life. In the same time, you need to be right there. And when you are there, you will begin to do what? You begin to flourish. You begin to prosper. God told Abraham, Jacob, Go, I will deal well with you in that land. I will deal well with you in that land. But remember, when this man was able to embark on this journey, he began to embark because of the word of God. Not because of feelings. Not because of his uh, uh, current experience or whatever. But by the word of God. What am I talking about? Our talent today is this. Most of us, we hear the word of God, but it does not motivate us. We hear the word of God and it does not compel us to do anything. We hear the word of God and we do not work in accordance with the word of God. That is why we are where we are here today. But for those that are able to hear this word and they begin to move by it, their story will always be be a good one at the end of the day. They will always experience good things. They will experience good things that no man can do for them. They will begin to fulfill their destiny again. I pray today, as well as under the sound of my voice, that the word of the Lord will come to you in this season. The word that make men to prosper, let it locate someone right now. The word that make men to prosper, let it locate someone right now. The word that make men to break forth, let it locate somebody right now. You have been in this prison here for a long time. In one day, when a man is in prison, there are things he experiences. The, one of the things he experiences is this. That there is a switch of will. He will no longer be pursuing his own will. He will pursue the will of others in respect of trying to do what? Trying to come out in order to begin to pursue his own destiny. But when the one that is not in prison, what he does is to do what? Is to advance or to pursue his goals in life. But when a man is in prison, he will begin to look for what? For the way out. He will first of all look for the way out, come out of it before he begins to advance in life. 
So that is why to be in prison is a challenge, a, a, a big deal. Most will not be able to come out of it. Most will be there for a long time. Most will lose the, the, the purpose of God concerning them and their family in such a prison yard. But I pray today, as many as are in prison yard, spiritually, financially, emotionally, otherwise, you come out of it this hour. In the name Jesus, in the name Jesus, in the name Jesus, come out of it. I declare you break forth in the name of Jesus. And when you break forth, there is such a thing not to be breakthrough. The man called Jacob, he explained the same thing. When he began to advance, a time came he began to pray to God because he was afraid of the man called Esau, what Esau was going to do. And he began to pray, and while he was praying, he was doing what he needed to do to get to his destination. And a time came, he knew that it was Esau he was going to meet. He began to strategize on how to do what, how to break through, on how to do what, how to break through. At the end, he broke through that process. But remember before he broke through, he was able to to do what see himself in a battlefield what am i saying if you see yourself in a battlefield remember this message the book of first timothy chapter one verse number chapter one verse verse number six or chapter six verse number twelve it says fight the good fight of faith when you see yourself in a battlefield do not be afraid do not say he will help me remember this message fight the good fight of faith Fight the good fight of faith. This is our challenge. At the point of breakthrough, at the point of breakthrough, because we have experienced break forth, we now want to relax, and those of us that want to proceed, at the point of breakthrough, they are overwhelmed, and they become fearful, they become afraid, they begin to think that yesterday was better. I've come to tell you, after break out, there is something known as what? Breakthrough. And in breakthrough, what you have to understand is this, First Timothy 6 12, which says, Fight the good fight of faith. That is why you have to fight to ensure you fulfill what? The purpose of your life, the purpose of your calling, the purpose of your ministry. If you do not fight, it will be, it will be what? A problem for you and your generation. So, at the point that the man called Jacob was able to break out of the hand of Laban, Laban he was able to get to a height. He needed to expect breakthrough. But at that point in time, it was what? A battlefield. He began to see a battlefield. But that was, the Bible said, that Jacob was able to fight so much so that he prevailed and after he prevailed he was what able to receive from the angel what did he receive the angel said unto him this man what is your name he said Jacob and the angel said no your name shall no longer be called Jacob rather it shall be called what Israel on that strength the calling and the purpose of the existence of Jacob became what became was made manifest became real in his own life and in his own generation I've come to speak to someone today it's a season to fight the good fight of faith. In as much as the word of God has so much significance and importance in our life, receive the word and do what? And break out and do what? And break through. It's a season of breakthrough and breakout. On that strength, fight the good fight of faith. And may you prevail in this season. In Jesus' mighty name we declare. Amen. Go and remain blessed. The Lord be with you. In Jesus' mighty name we declare. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I have come to tell you this morning that the plan of God for you in this season is the plan of greatness. Your enemies will find out at the end of the day that indeed you are not who they think you are. I want you and I pray and I desire you become a man of integrity in accordance to the principles or in accordance to the values of the kingdom of God. I am going to tell you today that God has a place for you and if you understand this, you will never be weary in life.